Fuzz into fuzz, I like it. Hey guys, welcome to that panel show. Dan here. <laughs> Mick here, hello. Killer. 1961 Strat. Whammy bar action. Mm. Not that far out. Ah, it's awesome. Not that far out. Pretty good. Welcome. Um, slightly tangential beginning to today's show. Yes. Um, as regular viewers will know, fuzz is a huge thing for me and Dan. Mm -hmm. And it, would it, is it fair to say, Dan, that we sort of tend towards your vintage voiced fuzzes? Yeah, well, there's a, there's a, a, a range of classic fuzzes that we really like. Your fuzz face, your tone bender, your super fuzz uh, type circuits. Love those. Absolutely love those. Me too. And I, I've never really been in a position to own any like proper vintage fuzzes. Yeah. And as such, managed to sidestep some of the foibles mm. and idiosyncrasies of owning some of those vintage fuzzes. Having said that, I've started to stumble into some of those issues just recently. One mm. of what more recently was the buffer issue. Yeah, which you, there's a whole other video on that if you want to watch that. Secondly, is temperature. This is fascinating. I love this story. So this this is a genuine kind of this is a genuine happening that we've expanded into a show, and basically uh, what happened was, I'm a big fan of Dan drives fuzzies. Yeah, Dan's a German dude, builds pedals by himself. Lots of cool players use them, and they sound great. He's a lovely guy, and he's a he's a really special human and we've become friends and I love his fuzzies. We know, guitar players know, that vintage germanium fuzz is problematic with temperature. Yes. It's folklore. Physics law. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, physics law. But it, for me it's folklore because A, I tend to play silicon ones. Yeah, right. And I do wonder if the reason I've gravitated towards silicon is because when I played a germanium, it might have been having a problem. Sure. <laughs> um, and secondly, because the kind of fuzzes that I have tend to be more modern yeah. and therefore don't suffer those things. But yep. have you had a problem with germanium fuzz and temperature? Absolutely. Uh, germanium fuzz living in Australia um, was always fun. My first fuzz pedal, I was in a studio with a producer, um, and he said, oh, you got to try this. And he pulled out this silver box with three knobs on it, and I plugged in his like it blew my mind. <laughs> um, and he said, okay, you need to, uh, uh, do you want one? I said, yeah. He says, the guy that builds them, he doesn't build them very often, but I have a word, see if he'll build one for you. Just like Dan Drive. <laughs> right. Um, and it was a guy that worked at Guitar Crazy in Coogee, 500 bucks, right? Which was... What, in like 1990-whatever? Yeah, 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 mid-90s. Oh, wow. A huge amount of money. That was a lot of money. Well, and he just happened to have these transistors. Um, you know, and I had no idea what was going on. I said, yeah, I, I want one like my mate. So he built me one and took it to the first gig and was like, yeah, man, it was great. Um, and it was a gig at night it was sort of sort of winter time brilliant and then i remember we had a gig at a in a beer garden sunshine really warm and i was like okay, here we go here's the time for my fuzz solo <laughs> and it was just like that <laughs> nothing just it just sounded awful so what you'd lost volume well, just all of the, uh, it just, that thing, that sound you get when you bias right back. Yeah. Just, yeah. And it wasn't, that wasn't the sound I was looking for from this pedal in that can be a really cool sound. Yeah. It was, this thing just had this really beautiful creamy fuzz to it. Well, that, that's, that sort of mirrors the, the recent experience I had because Dan, I'm really a big, massive fan of the Secret Machine. The Secret Machine is a Zonk style fuzz. Mm. So the Zonk, um, we've covered this before, but it, it, in the mid '60s, there when the fuzz thing happened, Maestro F said, 
uh, FZ1 and FZ1A fuzz was the sort of start of it. And off the back of that circuit came all the famous fuzzes you know. So the fuzz face, the the um, tone bender. Yeah. And anyone who, who was anyone in producing electronics at that time was probably making a version of that circuit. Yeah. yeah. And the version made by a UK company called John Hornby Skews & Co., uh, one might say the original JHS, um, made a thing called the Zonk Machine. And the Zonk Machine, based on a tone bender, um, but seemed to have this extra octave kind of characteristic about them. And that's what some of the best vintage ones have gone on to, um, people really love them for, is that extra little octave in the sound there. Not like an Octavia or something like that. Yeah. Not like an over, or even the um, one that you love, the Shiné one. Yeah. Which is overtly octave fuzz. Yeah, it was just an octave character. It's just this... yeah, more of those that harmonic really sort of stuck through. And it is interesting because talking to Dan about it. Sorry, there's a point to this tangent. Talking to Dan about it, you know, the the, the zonks that exist still exist. Yeah. All sound radically different. Yeah, absolutely. Why? Probably, in a large part, down to the variability of some of those transistors. Yeah. Specifically the vintage germanium transistors absolutely that you know not only were heat sensitive but had all sorts of other physical characteristics that meant they would change over time or they just sounded different in the first place sure. well they call it leakage yeah so you've got you've got the gain and you've got your leakage and basically whatever the leakage is you take that away from the gain and that's what you end up with yeah right and germanium uh, is you know germanium transistors are notorious for leakage whereas silicon doesn't have that problem right or, you know certainly not in the same way so if you get a modern silicon transistor and measure it for leakage you won't find any yeah you know but the germanium transistors like you know it, it doesn't mean that uh you know as a transistor they're really poor but put them in a Fuzz yeah. face, and yeah, they're yeah. unbelievable. And that's the sound. And they don't sound like anything else. Yeah. You know? I mean, it could may, it may well have been one of the main reasons that, um, you know, the, the big shift from germanium to uh, silicon happened because of that. Of course. Yeah, yeah. You know, in, unpredictability. So this is timely for two reasons. One, of course, the Benson germanium fuzz has just come out, which has internal thermal control. <laughs> it's just nuts. <laughs> to keep the temperature it's constant, so... which we will get to. Yeah, we will yeah. get to. Secondly as a big fan of the secret machine. Now the secret machine is um, a germanium fuzz, but it uses what Dan describes as CV military spec mm. uh, germanium transistors, which are less susceptible to less leakage. temperature change. Yeah. And te okay, yeah, right. Um, well, that's the thing, isn't it? Because as, as, the, as the temperature changes in these tr in germanium transistors, like the, the colder it is, the less gain, but less leakage. Yeah. Warmer it is, more gain, but more leakage. So there is an optimum point somewhere in that scale. Oh, well, you know, wherever, because it's a sliding scale. Yeah. You know. I.e., and, and here's the story. So I love the secret machine. He says, I'm going to build you something special. Sends me the Optimus, Optimus machine, which you'll see in a minute. I plug it in. I think we used it on a show pretty much. It's unbelievable. And I'm like, yeah, this is it. This, yep. this is it. Yeah. Wow. This is, this is it. And then, brilliant. Awesome. Fuzz for the foreseeable future found. Mm -hmm. A couple of weeks passed. We plugged it in for the next show, and I can't remember what we were doing, but we plugged it in. And we're like, hmm. We're putting your board together, I think. Oh, yeah, could have been that. And you were trying a few things out, and you I had some like, fuzzes on the floor. This ain't working. Didn't really think too much more of it because we had to roll, cameras had to go. So, you know, you just put it to one side, choose something else, and I'll sort that out later. Woke up the next morning. And... Uh, That's very good. <laughs> Sorry, that was very good. <laughs> and I just went like, ah, bing. Okay, of course. Germanium fuzz. Underfloor heating. Underfloor heating. <laughs> <laughs> it's been sat here for a while. I bang on the text to Dan. Is there germanium stuff in the... Because I, I, I never asked him what the circuit was. Mm. Even with the secret machine, you know, I knew it was zonky, but I wasn't super interested thereafter. Um, is there germanium stuff in the uh, in the Optimus machine? He's like, yeah, there is. Um, 
and there's some pretty special germanium stuff in the optimus machine i've put in there two vintage red dot ac 125s and an oc44 an original old one yeah i'm like okay are they temperature sensitive and he's like i could hear his like <laughs> palm hitting his forehead <laughs> down the end of the phone <laughs> he's like yes they are so by way of long introduction what we've got today is some interesting apparatus uh we've got a bunch of fuzzes in the fridge. We do. I, thought, of... I, I arrived after you. I thought, oh, I better put mine in the freezer just to catch up. And I started building the board. And like an hour later, like, oh, far out, man. My fuzz is in the freezer. Yes. <laughs> so I went and grabbed it. So it's very cold. Well, presumably, um, super low temperatures can damage that kind of stuff. Let's hope not. Yeah, we'll soon find out. So there's a bunch of fuzzes in the fridge. We're going to bring them out one by one. We're going to heat them using uh, a heating device. Uh, and I bought my hairdryer. <laughs> I bought my hairdryer. <laughs> actually, actually, that's not true. I bought Catherine's hairdryer. And we have a temperature measuring device, um, which let's, for the sake of messing around, Daniel, see what we're measuring here. Okay. So the current temperature <laughs> on the CV military spec germanium transistors there, Daniel, is... Oh my God, am I going to put my glasses on? Right, it's got two things. 21.2, 21.2, more or less. Obviously, we can't, we can't measure inside the transistor. We can only measure on the case there. So mm -hmm. at best, this is, um, well, Dan and mixed style science, really. <laughs> so um, literally no idea how this is going to work. Dan, play the, uh, play the, um, this fuzz. Okay. I'll unleash the heating device. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And let's see what happens next. Uh, there was, yeah, there was a bit of difference actually. Seemed to be a lot more extraneous uh, noise, noise. And <laughs> stuff going on. When we do the next examples, go through the volume range on the guitar. A oh, bit, okay, so, yes, so we can hear stuff. Okay. Um, but the, the point really isn't to do it on this one because I know this one to be relatively temperature stable. It was. Um, the point is to do it. So it's now reading thirty nine on the back of the thing. So we've gone up almost twenty degrees there. And it, you know, not hard to think that you know on a sunny stage or something like that you're going to be pushing temperatures more than that probably well don't forget inside the pedal exactly because that when it's in the box yeah and it starts to heat up and of course then the color of the pedal makes a difference benson make a white one and a black one and they say don't buy the black one if you want to use it on a hot stage yeah right so we'll get into that in due course so should we bring our first contender in indeed by the way do you like the hairdryer <laughs> this is that pedal show 
Is it the Dyson one? Yeah. Oh, man. You join us as we go on safari to the fridge. The secret resting place of the lesser known temperature sensitive furs. Uh, right, let's go to the fridge and we'll bring out, seeing as we've been talking down drive, let's bring out the Optimus machine. Yeah. Catherine's on the phone. There we are, there she is. There she is. Nice. There everyone is. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to set the controls the same. More or less. Dan, have a quick blast on the secret machine. Okay. <laughs> You did say quick blast. I did. Otherwise, we're going to heat up. Oh, yes, right. You've just come out of the fridge. Yeah. Like you've just come out of the fridge. You're so worth it. Okay. This is the best day of my life. <laughs> if, if Dan's probably watching going, uh, you have totally ruined your secret machine. <laughs> um, he is German. Um, they shout a lot. Uh, okay. What well, did it get to? It got to 40 something. Okay. So there's proof positive that temperature does affect germanium transistors. That's it, a summer day in Australia. And it, <laughs> you know it what I mean? seems to affect those vintagey ones. Here's the OC44, this little black thing there. And then the two... Um, others are there and there, the little can looking things. That was awesome. Interestingly, for the, if anyone's wondering why there's an op amp in there, it's to do with the power supply and it's yeah, just the polarity. Not, yeah, not an op amp, that's a, I think it's like a charge pump or something. It's okay. It versus the, the um, it's, it's not part of the no. audio circuit. Um, well, that was interesting. That was 
blimmin' awesome. I've, I've heard it said that they go like into crazy oscillation. I've never actually heard it for, you, before. It's like um, the oh, what's that? The fuzz factory. Because mm. all those resistors are on pots, and you can get that sort of a sound. So that's what you're doing. Yeah. Okay. Um, so let's. Hopefully, it will cool down a little bit. Um, yeah, we just to see how how fast it cools down. What we'll do for the remainder of the show, I'll leave it out in here in the sort of ambient temperature of the room, and then at the end of the show we'll see where it is. Okay. And see if we're into. Because obviously, between it, when we first plugged it in, it sounded. Yeah, banging. And we were reading fourteen, fifteen. Off the off the machine here. Can't say this machine is hundred percent accurate. Thank you, Simon, for bringing it in. Um, and then at the end there, it was somewhere between 40 and 50 and we were into crazy oscillation. Yeah. So presumably somewhere between that gain range, that temperature range is a whole bunch of different responses sure. from the fuzz. Oh, what's next? What's next? What's next? <laughs> um, well, in the fridge, we've got an analog man Sunface. Gem germanium and we've got my Jimi Hendrix fuzz silicon. Face. Which is silicon. Which is silicon. Okay. Should we try that? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that was the best thing ever. Okay. <laughs> cool. I shall set the fuzz face as all fuzz faces should be set. Philip Sace told me this. Here's a little tip for you. Um, put it all to 10. And then uh, turn it back until the sound of frying bacon disappears, which is about there. It's about nice. Nine. It's about nine, but of course, depending on your transistors, it may change. I've even got a fresh battery, given that when we used it last week, it sounded like it was dying a little more than I like it. There you go. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. Great. So give us a temperature reading then, Daniel. Okay. What you see there is two AC, uh, BC108 14 degrees. transistors. So good, roughly where we were before. change? No. Nope. Keep going. We got to Keep almost going. 50 with the last one, I think. All right. So, yeah, silicon, <laughs> as if we needed to prove it.
Okay, Analog Man NKT Red Dot. This is the prized Analog Man fuzz. Dan, what are we reading on those lovely NKT germanium transistors? 18.8. Uh, okay, so a little bit hotter than we were before. <laughs> That's what my fuzz did, my original one in Australia, Complete, exactly that. Completely different set of results. So where the old OC44 or whatever it was went into full on oscillation, this one's just shut down. And is that, do you think that's the, the transistors or do you think that's something to do with the bias circuit and the power supply? No, it's the transistors. So we're not affecting anything else, well, we might be affecting something else in the pedal. But that's cool, it's like really gated and awesome now. So we're going to hope that it comes back to life. Yeah. I, I did say to Dan, I said, do you want to use mine? Because I don't use mine that much. So if you want to use mine and it <sighs> dies. It's coming back. So what we'll do, let's have a little conversation. Okay. And just see, keep measuring it. Yep. Tell you what else I noticed, there was one point when it got up from 18, I don't know where it was, in the mid 20s somewhere, where the gain was lovely. Yeah. There yeah, was yeah. more gain. Yep. And it was really beautiful. Yeah, so that would make sense because as we temperature goes up, it increases the gain but also increases the leakage. Ha. Huh. It's funny, isn't it? Heat your blooming boutique transistor. Uh, vintage beautiful fuzz up to get that horrible gated sound <laughs> so it's coming back to life it is thank god <laughs> yeah, there was genuine worry on his face now this makes sense when you think of those studios that would have their favourite fuzz faces and keep them in the fridge. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you hear all these things, don't you? And we know them to be true because we've read them. Or yeah. At least we know them to be because we've read them. But it's not until you actually do this stuff and experiment yeah, with it. And it's, yeah, totally. Yeah. So the next thing, of course, is, well, yeah, you bought your whatever fancy ass. Oh, righty then, fuzz. <laughs> And it just, you go, well, it just sounds weird. Yeah. It's like, well, have you measured? You know, have you got it sat on an underfloor heating environment in the way that I had with my um, secret machine, uh, Optimus machine? Yeah. Where are we now, Dan? Where are we now? Okay. Wow, where are you? Yeah, 25. <laughs> So it's coming back. Yeah. I'm, I'm 
I'm really sorry for all the same <laughs> bloody clicks. Um, fascinating. Let's see where the Optimus machine is. See if it's come back down to earth just before we move on to the. Um, yeah, that one's as good as any to measure, isn't it? Yeah, 23. 23. Yeah. So let's see then. Let's see if the Optimus machine has come back. Remember, when we turned it off at 40 something, it was self oscillating. Indeed. Ready? Have a play. Sounds great. And I think where we are now is in between, back to the top of the show, when we came in that day, yeah. it was making a lot of that extraneous noise, which okay. it definitely wasn't making at 14 degrees. Right. Interesting. When you turned it on, it was, wasn't was whisper quiet, but it was certainly a lot quieter than that. Sure. So now we've got all that extraneous noise, mm. but the tone is back. much nicer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it's definitely not self-oscillating. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Probably many of you throwing things at the screen right now going, well, duh. That was awesome. Okay, wow. so we know that. We've, what, have, what have we done? We've, ta we've tested two germaniums, three germaniums. One made with mil-spec uh, CVs that was... Which was very stable. Yeah, not, not unaffected, but very stable. Yep. We tested the vintage... Um, germaniums in the Optimus machine. Yep. Oscillation City. Look at the way Dan does his circuit boards. I love that. He coats the circuit board in the same stuff he coats the pedal in. That's <laughs> wonderful. It's wonderful. Uh, as an interesting extra spawny point of fact, I had a FaceTime with Dan where we positioned the fabric. <laughs> of the, really? Of the front. I chose the fabric and chose how it was going to be positioned on there as well. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, and then we've tested, you know, what we consider to be probably the best modern production, traditional fuzz face type. Yep. Consistently yep. is Analog Man, uh, Sun Face range. And um, found a different temperature variance, but one that's there nonetheless. Yeah. And it basically didn't touch the sides of the silicon. Yeah, exactly. Jimmy Hendrix. Yeah. All of which brings us to the Benson fuzz. Yeah. A couple of really interesting things going on with this fuzz. So it has a heater inside and a temperature gauge. And it's designed to operate at a certain temperature, at a temp like a temperature range. And the pedal's just gone red. When the LED is red, it's heating the pedal up to that temperature range. And then if you watch it, any second, it'll go green, and it turns the heater off, and it starts to... So it keeps it there. So so it just oscillates, there we there go, go green. green. And now it oscillates between the you know that temperature range, but that's the optimum temperature for the pedal to operate at. It also has a really interesting circuit on the input. Uh, we talk about buffers a lot with fuzzers and how you know sensitive they are to buffers. This basically has got a pickup coil on the input so that uh, it's much less affected by a buffer because whatever input impedance it sees, it then comes out the end of that coil at a certain uh, impedance. So it's kind of, it's faking, it's saying, you're seeing a guitar here. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically. Kind of, it, yeah. It, but internally inside the pedal. So if you hit it with a buffer beforehand, yeah. Yeah, it, it will still it, it will still work. Now there's, you know, it's one of those things. It's not that circuit. It's not a perfect solver, but it does work brilliantly. Yeah. In this, and you can tune it with that impedance 
Knob. Well, exactly. You tune the, the input impedance. Yeah. Very because cool. depending on, on what you've got before it, um, yeah, you can you can tune that impedance. It's really, really, really super cool. clever. Do you know how, what stops it getting above temperature? Because obviously it's got a thermal circuit. Well, yeah, that's but that's the reason they say if you've got a black one, don't put it in the sun because once it hits that peak, and I'm assuming they have uh, that temperature range they've set it at is quite high. Yeah. Right. So that you know they um, it'll heat up and then cool down. So they've biased it to work in that temperature range. Have you had but a look in the back? But they're saying the black one. Don't use the black one outside because it'll then go above that temperature range. Have you had a look in the back? I haven't. I wonder if we can see the transistors. And if we can, obviously, we're going to have to do the hair dry test on that as the last thing we do today. Okay. In the ha <laughs> Have a play. Have a play. Yeah, in the meantime, there's, there's, there's a couple interesting questions for me. Um, as a f So it is based on the classic smiley face two knob fuzz, right? They say that in their literature. Um, so it is essentially a first face type circuit. Uh, what Benson also says is that they tuned it to part of that whole buffer circuit is to get rid of some of that idiosyncrasy mm. in the way it reacts with other pedals. Also, obviously, the temperature issue. But in addition to that, they just say it sounds nice across a broad range of overdrive to heavy fuzz tones. Right. So I'll test that. And then the, the thing that perennially annoys me about trying to find a really great sounding fuzz and then when I find one I find it doesn't work with other stuff we'll try the clon before and after it and also the delay and reverb after just to see what those buffers either side do if you remember go back and watch the most recent buffers and fuzz video that we did where I was having all kinds of trouble turning on a buffer after I think it was maybe the secret machine mm. or something and everything just got crazy bright because you're changing the output um, impedance relationship. Is that enough talking? Very good. So let's see what it sounds like um, as a straight fuzz face type. Should we compare it with my favourite Jimi Hendrix one? Yeah, great. Okay, this this is your fuzz face. Yes. <laughs> Sounds great. There's more top end present. A lot more presence. One thing I just want to check. I'm um, going to turn down the um, mix control on the reverb. So you're not hearing any reverb, but it's on. So the buffer is on. And then I want to turn the reverb on and off after the fuzz just to see what happens. Sure. OK, so give us, uh, give us some reverb, Dan. <laughs> the same thing over and over again. Yep. Thank 
Mm, fascinating. So it has a huge effect on the first phase. Yeah. Um, having a buffer after the first phase. So your guitar, fuzz, and then anything with a buffer in it. So much so that we just turn the effect off in the reverb there. So it's only the buffer happening. And it, what does it do, Dan? It drops the output impedance? Yeah, substantially. So if you, in the fuzz phase, if looking at the circuit, you know, the, the input of the guitar is, I mean, it's connected directly to the base of the transistor, right? There's no, there's no um, buffer circuit. Like not in all the overdrive pedals, you get, your input goes in. The first thing that happens is it gets buffered, yeah. right? And then once it's buffered, you can do anything to that, and it's going to be really stable. Well, in fuzz pedals, they didn't do that. Yeah. Okay. So. And that is the relationship, that dynamic relationship between the impedance and the adaptance of the coil to that part of the circuit. But then if you look at the output of it, it goes straight to the volume pot. So the lowest amount of impedance that you the lowest amount of output impedance that you've got is basically when the volume's up full. So there's that thing where That's why they sound so good when they're flipping ex volume. That up. is exactly it. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. just about level. Yeah. It's the sound changes because the impedance changes as you turn the volume pot up. Um the lowest amount of impedance is basically when the volume's off and when the volume's full up. But anyway in, in the middle position, you've got the most amount of impedance. So normally in a overdrive pedal, you've got your, your volume thing and then it's buffered. So you don't, you know, you've got, you you got a fixed input impedance and a huh. fixed output impedance. In fuzz circuits, you don't have that. But because of that, it's based all around the uh, the, pers the, um, the character of the transistors. So you have this enormous array of fuzz pedals that sound different, purely based around the character of those transistors. I think what Benson have done, they've found a really clever way to have a lower output impedance, buffer the input circuit. Um, so it all sounds great. Re you know, still works with the volume control. We'll do that next, yeah. Um, but you can see the issues that would instantly arise using a tra traditional fuzz phase circuit in a pedal ball where you want the things going on after it and things going on before it, but you also want to have it by itself. Yeah. You know, it's fascinating. Very cool. Okay, so the next thing to explore then um, is the input impedance thing. Yes. Which affects the cleanup. And secondly, the cleanup. Um, we've said it before, this blue fuzz face is probably my favorite fuzz for cleanup. So I'll get the old strat, given that that's got the magic volume knob. We'll turn some reverb on and uh, let's see, let's play cleanup for a minute and compare the Benson and the, and the fuzz face. Wicked.
food. That was awesome. Interesting. Yeah. What'd so yeah, I mean, the, the the impedance thing was turned right down on the on the Benson at the end there, so we would expect it not to be cleaning up quite the same. Um, background noise a little more, mm. and I don't know whether that's because it was a bit louder. Felt like it had a bit more gain dialed in than the first face. Certainly, still nothing cleans up really like the first face. Um, yeah, and and bear in mind these are all in loops of G two as well. So, uh, G three, we're not. Um, G3 should iron out any uh, problems of anything being chained together. So it's seeing exactly. everything is being just, seen equal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, if the, so we've got the, with the delay and the reverb, and so obviously the pedals are going into that and they're seeing the input impedance of the delay and reverb and buffers, et cetera. Yeah. Um, but you're not, you know. And am I right in saying in, in all instances there, the clon is after everything? Exactly. Oh, sorry, yeah. it's after the fuzzies, not before yeah. the fuzzies. Unreal. Um, we should, in the interests of completeness, do two things. One, feed something into the Benson and play with the impedance knob for the buffer issue. Sure. And then heat the Benson up and see what happens. Okay. Right, uh, little continuity break there. We just had a quick look in the back of the Benson to see if we can heat it up, and the circuit board's the other way up. So we've decided we're going to heat it from the outside when it comes to heating. Like, um, a, like a little oven. As it were, a sun on a hot uh, festival stage. Right, so what we've done now is we've put the clon before the fuzzies. And the point of this is to have a look at what that um, clever buffer circuit and kind of coil replicating circuit is doing in the front of the Benson. Yep. Let's start with the first face. Dan, if you wouldn't mind playing the first face and turning your volume down and up uh, as sure. you go. Yeah, yeah, sure. You might think it's the clon being on doing most of that. All that is, is a buffer hitting the fuzz face. And that is why, Dan... Buffers are such a nightmare of fuzzers. Yeah, it's why... It's why when anyone says, where should my fuzz go? Oh, it's exactly. first in line. Yeah. Straight after your guitar, because if you introduce a buffer, and bearing in mind that when it's on, any pef pedal has a buffer, but also in the case of the clon, because it's not true bypass, has a buffer when it's off as well. Let's hear it again. <laughs> acoustic guitar resonating sympathetically there. Could be a cool sound, could be exactly what you're looking for when yeah. the pedal's up, because it gives you a bit more like, Ugh. but when you're doing that all important volume down on the guitar, the buffer before just kills it. Absolutely. So let's see how the Benson gets on then. Really impressive. I don't know if that's how it's designed to be used, but 
it felt like what I immediately felt drawn to be doing was finding the point on the Benson of least change. With the impedance control. Between the buffer being yeah. on and off. Yeah. Fascinating. Well, so yeah, clever. I mean. There you go. Well done. Yeah, absolutely. For that input impedance thing, clearly works. Brilliant. Um, well, we're just heating now, aren't we, Dan? <laughs> Can I just see if it, is it making is it making any noise? Same as it was before. Yeah. Okay, so we weren't heating the transistors directly, but we no, but that because they we'd gone up thirty degrees on the outside temperature. So one would assume it was getting pretty warm in there. Yeah. It does say in the thing that it's designed to work between zero and hundred degrees. Blank and air. I don't know whether that means Farron bobs or Celsius bobs, but if you imagine. That in the sun, and you've set up, you've done your sound check, gig isn't for six hours. It's going to get hot. It's going to get absolutely roasting. Did you notice it getting louder? It did get louder. Absolutely got louder. And pretty, and cooler sounding, I thought. Uh, sorry. <laughs> and not, um, it, I preferred the sound. Sure. It sounded really great. And the overdrive sound at the end was glorious. Yeah, amazing. There's definitely, I mean, bearing in mind... My two favourite fuzzes pretty much in the world are on the board today. My Jimi Hendrix silicon fuzz face and the Dandrive uh, Optimus machine. That does its own thing. The Optimus machine is its own thing. Mm. There's elements where I preferred the Benson over the fuzz face today. Okay. In terms of fidelity. Yeah. It's really tricky. The, the moments that... Uh, I was going, oh man, that's incredible. I turned around you and you were on your fuzz. Yeah, I mean, and that, that could be that I'm more familiar with well, it. Exactly. It might just be that. Noise that, floor was lower for sure. Yeah. Which, yeah. how could that be possible in a blooming old, you know? Oh, I'm, I think, you know, it's hard to say, but part of that may be that the, you know, the input has got that buffer circuit on. Right. You know, so 
one of the, the great things about the fuzz faces is that design is so quiet because the input impedance is so low. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's, it's, it's getting yeah, rid of yeah, all yeah. the noise. One of those things, if, you, if the input impedance is too high, then it's not stable enough and then any ripple gets on there. Okay. Um, which is why, you know, one meg works really well. Yeah. That's why um, low impedance inputs are associated yeah, exactly, with low noise. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But if you make that, you know, a hundred meg, you suddenly you you you'll see that um, be quite noisy. Uh, but it sounds fabulous. Absolutely it does. fabulous. It sounds really good. Yeah. And definitely, definitely solves those issues that it claims to solve. But that's the thing, isn't it? It's so solid. In, yeah. In every scenario. Yeah. If you if you put that on the board, it's just gonna work. It's gonna work. Yeah. Very really, cool. really impressive. Um, shout out to the Universal Audio. What's it called? Golden, Golden Reverb. Golden Reverberator. That's the first time we've we've got all the new UA pedals, and we're uh, sort of gently stepping into them. Sounded pretty spectacular today, just on incredible. a incredible, pretty basic plate setting there. Yeah, just a um, mono plate setting is like whoa. Yeah, and also to. Um, Mr. Dyson and his offshore manufacturing <laughs> <laughs> and his horrifically expensive hair dryers. Yeah, um, I like Singapore. Yeah. So all that's left to do is to see if my favourite fuzz does still work. Sure. Because I am a bit scared about this. No doubt Dan's been throwing things at the screen while he's been watching. Nine! 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 Um, actually, while I'm doing this, I should also say Dan, bless him, and his friend Till have bought me a set of Klopman pickups. Oh, I saw those. Yeah. They just turned up in a post and he said, you have to try these. Right. So, I'm trying to think of Klop Klopman as a superhero. Klopman. <laughs> it's like a horse guy. <laughs> I am. Ah, oh, effects land. Let's make it really silly, Daniel, and do a hollow body with this really loud, fuzzy guitar sounds. Awesome. Gary Clark Jr., thank you. I am loving this guitar at the moment. What we got then? We are at 23. 23, so 23. it's come down. Did we, is that Three where we Celsius. left it? 23? Celsius. Something like that. Let's see if it's Hang making on, any I'll noise. Just try then. this then. Yeah, well, the clone's at 24, so that's we're back in the game. Yeah, so that's ambient temperature of this room. Yep. So. The question is, is the ambient temperature of this room too much for my beloved Dan Drive Optimus machine? Maybe. <laughs> Thank you. 
keep doing that all day. Killer. Nice. Um, so what I need to invent now is a little cooling system. Ah, oh, dude. For the secret machine. Trouble is, if you go for the water cooling, right, the modern PCs have water cooling. Mm. But I believe it works in the same way that a car works. So you get a radiator full of water. You make the water cold and then you use a fan to blow the cold water around everything. Okay. Can I just make a pedal board out of an esky? <laughs> just have the foot, foot switches popping through the top of the esky. Nice. Yeah. I don't know what an esky is. What's an esky? Oh, really? No. It's just, it's um, a disaster environmentally. It's just this massive polystyrene box ah. that you stick things in. It keeps them cold. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Do you not get eskies here? Well, they're probably called the proper name in the UK, like polystyrene cooling box. <laughs> Okay. But in in well, Australia, of course everything they are. gets shorter, doesn't it? It does. I remember my brother picking me up from the airport once going, we're going to go to the Botlow. <laughs> the Botlow? I'm like, what's a Botlow? He's like, it's a massive drive through booze shop. I'm like, I love this country. <laughs> yeah, man. My 18th birthday. Grab mum's car, yeah. down the Botlow. Yeah, and then I learned uh, on the throughout that trip, wherever you go, it's called whatever it is, oh. Oh, yeah. Dave-o. <laughs> Jello. Steve-o. pub -o. Up the pub, eh? <laughs> no, the road, eh? <laughs> What else? Uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Just got bitten by a snake, oh! <laughs> it's like, what are hospitals called? They're not called the fix -o, are they? Uh, in Germany, honestly, just to bring it back to Dan Drive, it's called a Krankenhaus. Uh, and the ambulance is called a Krankenwagen. <laughs> <laughs> this is what cultural blinkers actually looks like. Um, okay, uh, yes, the problem with the cooling system if you use water is condensation, so you can't, I mean, I was thinking about some sort of ice pack. Oh, okay. But there'd be condensation. Ah, see, the esky will take care of all that. We'll just... Yeah. Oh, you have the esky, you just ice, es I'll sort it out. I'm in the game, I'm yep. in the game, because yep. I can't face life without the, the Optimus machine. But yeah. if, it's, if it's best at sort of 21, 19 degrees, which it seems to be, Although when you flick the switch, it made a difference. Anyway, blah, blah, we could see, oh, this has gone on far too long. Hope that was interesting. Uh, I, uh, that was awesome. I don't know if it helps you at all in your choice of what fuzz is going to be affected by temperature and what isn't. What we're going to say, chances are if it contains vintage unobtainia, then it's probably going to be severely affected by temperature. Also, Unless think it's about, military spec ones. But you've got to think about the gigs you're doing. Like I've been using the Sunface for years, never had a problem with it. Yeah. Because uh, we live in England, yeah. all the gigs have been at night, uh, it's rarely sunny, so no issue. You only play in caves. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, where, you know, you, you're never warmed by the, the love from the audience. It's always cold and dark. <laughs> yeah, all you um, feel is their cold disdain. <laughs> okay. Yeah, well, that is the problem in here, I, I will repeat, is we do have underfloor heating. Yeah. So it's warmer down there. Yeah. Which is unusual for a floor. Yeah. But yeah, look, I've, you know, never, I've used it for years, never had an issue with it. So if you're doing lots of gigs outside, that sort of thing, yes, you need to really think about it. Mm. Um, or if it's just a really, really stinking hot day and you realise your fuzz sounds a bit off, now you know why. Yeah. Well, we took a long time to get there. There you go. Brilliant. Thank you so much for watching. Really hope you enjoyed that. Please subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Also, a massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Um, Anderson's Music of Guildford in Surrey. And Australia. Would be Pedal Empire, Brisbane, Queensland. And we have some links in the description box below. We do. If you click on them to Sweetwater, uh, I'm not sure much of this will be available there, but if you buy stuff through Sweetwater using our links, they buy us their transistors really warm, uh, fire up the money-making machine so it's spitting out glorious bills, uh, which they then send on the wings of collared doves across the Atlantic to us. It's been a long show. Yes. <laughs> a massive thank you to our patrons on Patreon. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, and also to anyone that's gone to thatpuddleshowstore.com and grabbed some merchandise. I, was, I had some epic product placement before. Oh, it's good, yeah. Yeah, you like that? Yeah. Um, T-shirts, cups, strings, pedals. Pedals, all sorts of stuff. Re albums, even. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, so yeah, thank you to everyone that's gone there and uh, bought some stuff. It helps us, it entirely helps us do what we do. Uh, there we go. Have a fantastic day and we'll see you on Monday for VCQ. Well, this will all get really interesting. <laughs> Indeed. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.